Hello everyone, in today's video I will show 5 paintings from the America Between Dreams and Reality exhibit shown at the Quebec National Museum of Fine Arts. This exhibition, which offers a broad survey of American art from the 20th and 21st century, is composed of a remarkable selection of paintings, sculptures, works on paper, and videos from the collection of the Hishorn Museum and Sculpture Garden in Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian Institute's National Museum of Modern Art. It brings together the work of more than 80 artists whose different approaches reflect the rich diversity of American art of the period. Some are among the 20th century's most celebrated creators, while others, less known, provide fascinating opportunities for discovery. All were either born in the United States or settled in the country. This exhibition illustrates the impact of social and cultural history on artistic creation in the United States from the 1910s to the present. It reveals how artists have helped define, reinvent, and even challenge the American dream as they creatively engage with its land celebrate its every day and explored technological revolutions and the effects of globalization. The exhibition also shines a spotlight on individual and collective identities and on a number of social, socially engaged practices. The works on view confirm that major issues of concern to American society today are also those that concern us. The recent history of Quebec and of the world is inexchangeably linked to that of the United States, and American art inevitably casts light upon our Americanness. An exhibition organized by the Musée National des Beaux Arts du Québec and the Hishorn Museum and Sculpture Garden, Washington, D.C. Here we see a portrait of Andy Warhol painted by Julian Schnabel, uh, who is born in 1951 in the state of New York, USA. This painting was done in 1982 and is an oil on velvet. It is normally found in the Hishorn Museum in Washington, D.C., USA. The artist, Julian Schnabel, painted his co-worker and friend, Andy Warhol, with a cryptic and eerie portrait. The painting depicts a splash of random colors on a black velvet as the background. The pop artist, Warhol, is standing on the right, half-naked, with a red light corset around his waist. Schnabel used known facts about what happened to Warhol. Warhol was shot three pistol bullets in his stomach by someone and then barely survived. He had to wear the supporting corset as depicted in the painting. Unlike Warhol's portrait, which depicted people with a callous indifference, the painting's hero appears very emotional. The painting expresses an eerie expression of pain and fear, but also expresses an emotional character who also appears to be thinking about what happened and what life will entail. Julian Schnabel is a Jewish American artist and filmmaker. His artistic breakthrough came by his plate paintings, which were large scale paintings in which broken plates were set upon. He directed five independent films, notably Nightfalls and The Diving Bell. He's won numerous awards from the Cannes Film Festivals, the Golden Globes, and the Academy Award. For his part, Andy Warhol was an American artist born on the 6th of August 
1928 and passed away on the 22nd of February 1987. He was a film director, visual artist, producer, and leading figure in the pop art movement. His artwork is known to be colorful and often refers to pop culture. He's used many styles and art tools in his long artistic career. The event depicted in this painting was the assassination attempt in 1968 of Andy Warhol at the hands of a former colleague, Valerie Solanas. Maria Amaya was also shot but suffered only minor injuries. Solanas turned herself in after the assault and indicated that Warhol had too much control over her life. In 1967, she wrote the SCUM Manifesto and was a radical feminist who believed that men should be eliminated. She was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia only after the assassination attempt. Solanas and Warhol worked together at Warhol studio, The Factory, where she was only a marginal figure in the scene. Warhol had this to say about the attacks by Solanas. Before I was shot, I always thought I was more half there than all there. I always suspected that I was watching TV instead of living life. People sometimes say that they the way things happen in movies is unreal, but actually it's the way things happen in life that's unreal. The movies make emotions look so strong and real, whereas things really do happen to you. It's like watching television, you don't feel anything. Right when I was about being shot and ever since, I knew I was watching TV. The channel switched, but it's all television. So here are my thoughts on this particular piece. What I like is that there's different materials. So you have paint, you have velvet, uh, you have you know, a real event and a fictionalization of the event, right? So you have a mixture of different things where it's not just one thing. Where, as for me, for example, I did not know that... Uh, Warhol was shot, right? So for me, this would have been just yet another portrait of him, yet another fictionalization of his life. But it was interesting to see that this was a real life event that was fictionalized, sort of like what you see in a lot of movies, for example. You see a lot of movies where they say based on a real event, but yet you know and understand that a lot of what you see in the movie is not quite real. There's a certain amount of fictionalization, a certain amount of lies or half truth, if you rather, that are happening in the movie. What I also like about this particular painting is the fact that you have a mixture of dark and light. You have the black velvet, and but the light uh, paint. So you have a mixture of something that's very bright and very dark. This also is very representative of the event, right? It was a very bleak, very dark moment of Andy Warhol's life. Uh, being shot is definitely not a fun experience. But it was also a positive where he had a, an enlightenment in his uh, life and in what he was going through and his interpretation of his life. This painting is called The Greatest Homosexual After Napoleon in his study by David Larry Rivers, who was born in Bronx, New York in 1925 and passed away in 2002. This painting was done in 1964 and is an oil collage graphite pencil and colored pencil on canvas. It is a gift of Joseph H. Hershorn in 1966. Larry Rivers is seen to be the founder of pop art as he was one of the first to blend non-narrative art with narrative and to create a detached abstraction. The charcoal outline and underlying oil painting at first glance appear to show an incomplete task, but the lines are calculated, the results are of which are ambiguous and fascinating. 
in an abstract expressionist environment he became began painting in his early in the early 1950s painting realistic objects through a period of impersonations rivers demonstrates with restrained humor jacques louis david napoleon in his study by painting the greatest homosexual david larry rivers was born yitzhak loiza Gorsberg in the bronx in 1923 and passed away in 1978 he was a painter and sculptor and is thought of as the godfather of pop art there is some controversy however as one of the films he made shows his daughters gwyn and emma naked as children and teenagers they argue this film should not be in the public view as they were not consenting adults in it the larry rivers foundation has respected their views Napoleon Bonaparte was an impressive military commander who became the leader of France from 1804 to 1814 and again in 1815. He supported much of the reform in the country, some of which are still in place in France to this day. He was born in Corsica in 1769 and passed away in 1821. He had many titles during his reign of France, including the King of Italy and the First Council of France. He was married to Josephine Beauharnais and then to Marie-Louise of Austria after his divorce to Josephine in 1810. He had one legitimate child named Napoleon Francis Joseph Charles and at least two legitimate children, Charles Léon and Alexandra Colna Walkaki. In this painting, we see the reimagining of the Emperor Napoleon in his study at the Tuileries by Jean Jacques Louis David. In this painting, Rivers uses an optical illusion to make it seem as the combination of two unfinished sketches in which the viewer believes there is still work to be done and that the painting is a watercolor. Like the previous uh, photo or painting, what I like is the fact that you have this real person, i.e. Napoleon Bonaparte, that has been fictionalized. And that's what's wonderful about painting or the arts in general, is that they can fictionalize a real person or a real event and make it something else. It doesn't always have to be as is, right? Painting for a very long time was something that was uh, very realist right uh, realism is uh, an actual movement in painting and in arts in general where you had to represent life as it was so if you saw a flower for example you had to represent it exactly as you saw it but in recent events in recent history there was a push to reinterpret things where you had movements like pop art which is a big theme in the video today but also in impressionism uh, abstract art or whatever other art that you can you saw that artists were pushing to make art other than what is the truth you really saw artists questioning and pushing to represent art in some other way because they realized that sometimes the truth wasn't that wasn't what you saw it was something else that the government religion or other elements were pushing for a narrative were pushing for a scenario that wasn't representative of what we the average person was going through right we're not all wealthy we're not all um you know of a certain lifestyle most of us live a very different life than what is seen on tv than what is seen in painting etc so you had a push for the artist to represent the everyday man the everyday person really show that art can be something that's connected to uh, the everyday person and for me this painting really represents that that you have an illusion of what life is but when you look closely your life isn't quite what is represented in the painting. In this photo, you see an untitled work by David Hammonds, who was born in Springfield, Illinois, in the U.S. in 1943. 
this piece was made in 1989 from glass bottles, caps, silicone, glue, and coal. It is part of the Joseph H. Hershorn Purchase Fund, 1990. Hammonds has constructed diverse artworks that analyze the experiences of African American life and the role of race in the American community. Hammonds preferred to break away from his two-dimensional work and assign himself absolutely to sculptural montages, installations, and performances using disturbing materials such as elephant dung, chicken parts, hair, and cheap wine bottles. For the above displayed sculpture, he used cheap liquor bottles that were once marketed and directed towards the lower class African Americans. By creating an assemblage of these discarded bottles, he expresses an amalgamation of beauty and of discarded items. David Hammond is born in Springfield, Illinois in 1943 and was educated at Cal Arts Otis College of Art and Design uh, for night classes as he was not officially enrolled in the school where he was influenced by artists such as Charles White and Bruce Noman amongst others. His parents were divorced and was raised by his mother. Very little of his personal life is known and he tries to keep his personal and professional lives separate. This is to ensure that his work is seen in a certain light. He's active in the black artist community as he uses his finances to purchase the works of lesser known artists. His main goal is to never be associated with one particular style or to be associated with one particular work. What I like about this piece is that it's not a typical sculpture. When we think of a sculpture, we think of something by uh, Leonardo da Vinci like David, where it's made of marble and it's uh, very well done and representative of reality. Here we have a basic sphere, a circle that's made out of alcohol bottles, right? And like uh, it was said in the video previously these are all cheap bottles of alcohol right and it's supposed to represent the fact that for a very long time black people were considered as second class citizens as uh, chattel that could be used and abused in any way because we you know for long part were not considered as human beings now thankfully this is no longer the reality but for many individuals uh you know they look at black people still as second class citizens still as something other than human right um so anything that uh you know demeans black people is a good thing right black people are alcoholics we're drug addicts we're second class horrible people that are nothing uh, to society would contribute nothing positive right now obviously most people realize that this is far from the truth most people will treat black people like any other human being there's good there's bad there's ugly there's pretty right um you know and thankfully this is not something that as a black person i live through on a day-to-day -day basis thankfully my experience shows that as long as I'm behaving like a decent human being, most people will treat me very well, right? I'm not going through a horrible life experience. Now, not to say that there's no such thing as racism, that there's no such thing as a history of, uh, you know, slavery or anything else, but this is not the norm thankfully in modern world if you go through something bad in these days it is usually something that you had a, a, a hand to play in uh, but not that doesn't mean that nothing bad happens or nothing bad has happened so this is a reminder uh, at least in my opinion that you know what we have had a very difficult history there's certain things in uh, the history of black people that has been above and beyond our control and has been things that shown that there are people that are willing to set up a system that is against us and will really be pro other people this piece is called seven up made by clay's oldenburg 
who was born in Stockholm, Sweden in 1929, and he passed this year in 2022. This artwork was made in 1961 using enamel, plaster, cloth, and wire. It is normally found in Hishorn Museum and Sculpture Garden and uh, the Smithsonian Institute, Washington, D.C. It's found there because of the Joseph H. Hishorn Purchase and Bequest Funds in 1994. Renowned pop artist Clays Aldenberg's trademark sculpture features frequent items such as french fries, telephones, and hot water bottles made for, from delicate goods such as latex and canvas. Oldenburg finally began producing extensive public works, many of them in association with the Kuzji van Bruggen, who later became his wife. 7-Up is mounted on the wall and it resembles a creased 7-Up can. Paint drips from the red rim, blue outlines, and green body onto the molded surface, which is especially noticeable in the big white 7-Up. Clays Oldenburg was born in Stockholm, Sweden in 1929 and passed away this year in 2022. He is known for his large replicas and soft sculptures of everyday items that he has done with his wife, in part named Kuzji van Bruggen. Soft sculptures are typically made of cloth or rubber, for example. His works are found in public areas across the US and many other countries. He is associated with pop art, but has also done portraiture and street art. His works has, have been displayed in the US, Germany, and England, England, amongst many other countries. He's received many awards, including the Wolf Prize in Arts in 1989. What I like about this uh, sculpture or painter, or however you want to qualify this, is that you see this item it's an everyday brand right we all know 7up we all know coca-cola and pepsi but yet there's something so drastically different this is not the 7up that we think about right this is not the way the brand looks right and most brands whether you're talking about pepsi coca-cola mcdonald's walmart youtube or anything else this is not what you think of most of these brands try to come out as clean and you know well represented uh this is not a clean brand this is not the seven up that's uh you know pg-13 for everybody this looks dirty this looks used and abused this looks like something that you would find in a garbage can right um, this is something that's clearly not the well-polished version of the brand. Um, and it kind of goes against what you would expect the brand to represent itself. And I think that uh, this is very representative of our society. When we think of name brands, we think of these neat, nice, clean, well-represented brands that you know on surface level when you're first seeing them are very beautiful and perfect and wonderful everything's well put together well thought of and how can they do anything bad but yet when you look at this painting when you look at the sculpture it, it looks like it's bleeding it looks you know it's a broken can right it's not the the pristine clean brand that we think of this is not the coca-cola or the pepsi of everyday life this is something that has clearly gone through the ringer clearly gone through really bad things in a, a day-to-day basis and uh you know how, how can you not connect with that how many of us have lived a perfect life most of us have not gone anywhere near a perfect life you know we've all had our struggles our difficulties difficulties our our you know imperfections our sins right how many of us can say that we've lived a saintly life not many and it's not to say that that's a bad thing but that's the reality that most of us have gone through most of us have gone through some amount of bad things and yes 
most of us need help of some kind, of some degree, right, to make ourselves uh, more presentable, better, uh, improve our life in some way, shape, or form. Uh, that is what makes us humans, is the fact that we are imperfect, that we are not saintly people, that if we are going to be saintly, that there's a lot of work to go into that life. This piece is called O by Jacqueline Humphreys, who was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, 1960. It was created in 2015 and is an oil on linen. It is a museum purchase with funds provided by the Brazil Alcazi Purchase Fund in 2017. The inventory number is 2017.003. Jacqueline Humphreys is a member of the generation of artists who undertook their studies in the 1980s, when the development of new media was called in the continuing relevance of painting into question. In this canvas, she has distributed a number of black circles across a colored ground covered in a variety of small marks. On close examination, it is possible to identify the widely diverse forms as splashes, hand-painted X's, stencilized emojis, AC, ASCII characters, and other typographical symbols. By juxtaposing motifs borrowed from the lexicon of computers and Marx's characteristic of gestural abstraction, Humphreys revitalizes the language of painting in a way that acknowledges and even embraces the emergence of digital culture. What I like about this painting is not just the mix of colors and lack of colors with the black dots, but the fact that it is an abstract painting that represents the reality that many artists go through, right? how many artists get told well you're just putting paint on a canvas you're you know you're just an artist right uh like it was said earlier on in the video uh this artist you know started her work in the 80s and 90s when a lot of painters were being told well we have a software program for that we have a computer to do what you do so you know why do we need to pay you to do art why do we need to pay you to do anything we have computers to do that right so many of us uh get told that we're easily replaceable by computers we see that nowadays with cashiers who have lost their jobs due to computers right i often rather go to a a automated teller rather than a cashier where i get to just press a cup couple buttons and then 5, 10, 20 minutes my food is served to me, my item is served to me, right? So, so many of us get told that computers are the way of the future for better and for worse. Like anything else in society, there's good things to change and there's bad things to change. But for me, and this is just my personal opinion, this will force us to think of our lives in a different way. You know, it, I think to some degree, we all need to get ourselves detached from, I need a job, I need a job. And it's like, no, let's live our lives differently. Let's detach ourselves from that world of, I need money rather than, I need happiness. I need to live on a day to day basis. And if most of us are not living for the paycheck, the system will have no choice but to change, but become something else, something different. And as long as we continue living in that system of paycheck to paycheck, then that's all what we will think of. But yet, if most of us live in a world where, hey, robots can do most of our jobs, so why should I work? Why should I bother living that life? We'll have no choice but to find some other solution to put food on the table. But that's, again, just my opinion. Hopefully, you guys will watch this video, think about it, and propose other ideas or thoughts. 
what I enjoy about this particular painting is the fact that it is semi-cryptic. When you look at it uh, for the first time, you think, oh, it's just dots on a, a painting on a canvas. There's nothing much to it, right? But as you heard with my description of it, um, all the lines, the thoughts, all of it has meaning, right? It's almost a, like a, a trick of light where um, you you kind of have this secret message that you're 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 trying to discover and trying to figure out behind, right? Um, it's easy to just look at this painting and walk away, and not think uh, that that it has something more to it, right? It's it's not there's not much to it, right? So I think this painting is very symbolic of the experience that many have. Uh, in the U.S. in particular, where uh, for many people, uh, they feel like uh, they live in anonymity, where uh, people just walk by them. And, oh, it's just yet another black man, yet another black woman, yet another white man, yet another. It's just somebody else, right? Uh, yet when you look clear, clear, carefully, when you look at them clearly with, uh, you know, intent you see that there's more to this person right you see that there's something hidden that there's something there that's ready to be discovered um and that you can uh be more than what you appear uh that you don't just have to be yet another dot yet another line yet another number in the story of america